Okay, Audie. Audie, uh, where are you from originally? Where did you grow up? I growed up in Indiana until I was eight year old. And then my dad retired and moved back to his home place in Leslie County, Kentucky. And, and tell me about uh, your childhood. You had both your parents growing up as a kid? Uh, up till I was 12 year old, 11 year old. Then my mom and dad separated. And who raised you then? My dad and I stayed with my mom sometimes, but not much because I started going down the wrong path. What kind of stuff were you getting into? Drugs, smoking weed, and, and doing pill called Xanax and uh, Percocet. Oh, really? Yeah. How old are you? Uh, 46 year old. 46. Be, be 46 in January. So that, that was kind of the beginning of the, the drug yeah. problem here in yeah. Appalachia. How far did you go in school? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. And did you go to work at some point there? Uh, yeah, I worked all my life uh, out of these hills. I worked a few tax paying jobs, but I dig roots, called a yam, a co wash, we call it rattleweed, and a stone root in the wintertime now. Yeah. In uh, summer, I dig ginseng and yellow root and strip elm trees of on, the bar. Pri on private property. Yeah, people let us have them because they're no good for lumber. You can't saw them up for lumber. But the bark is? <clears throat> the bark is valuable. Yeah. And you, you like these ginseng you sell to the Chinese? Uh, well, I sell them to local to a, dealers a around middleman. here. Ever who pays the most, you know, that's who I sell to. Then that's what they do with it. They sell it to the Chinese. And that's where your most money is, is in ginseng and yellow root. And this, the life here in, in Appalachia, in the, especially in the mountains, is a, it's a tough life, right? It's a, it's a difficult yeah, way to survive. it's real tough. Because the way I earn, dig, I, I have to take a mattock and dig these out of the ground, one by one. <clears throat> and when they're just worth a couple cents a root, you know what, it takes a lot of roots to make $100. It's a lot of digging. That's yeah. two, two good sacks is a hundred dollars. I'm talking about sacks like this. You can imagine how many roots this round will go into one sack that big. Yeah. Probably three or four hundred roots, if not more. And that's three or four hundred times I have to dig a hole down in the ground to get it out. So it's rough. Yeah. Do you love your life here in Appalachia? I love it. What are your favorite things about it? The hills is my number one favorite thing about it and being able to go in and out of them, you know, when I want to, because they got diamond trails and stuff. We dig roots off them too. It's four wheeler trails. It goes for miles and miles through these hills. And I ride my four wheeler longer and I'll stop and like a swag, we call it, or a small holler, go down in them, look for roots. You know, to me, every day, I have to work just about every day to survive. And, you know, I've done everything in the world to survive. I've sold pills, I've sold pot, but that's, that all that's behind me. I don't do that crap no more. Mm -hmm. I just work for everything I get now. Easy money is never good money. And what are the worst things about living here? What, what's the hardest part? Just that you have to work so much? Because there ain't no jobs, you know, no good paying jobs. And if you get it here, you have to have a hustle, you know, like working out of the hills or you may work, be a carpenter or something like that and get odd jobs and just enough to feed yourself with is about all you make. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of the poorest parts of the country. Yeah. And everyone is going through the same, a similar struggle. Yeah. Is that, is that what makes everyone so helpful to each other? Yeah, uh, somebody ain't got a place to stay. I've took a many of a person in my home, and then you uh, you didn't see my home. I got a tiny home. You see them tiny homes like on TV? I see that, and I wanted me and my wife to have one, and that's what I've done. I'm still working on it slowly, but I'll get there as I get the money, you know. Most days I just make $30, $40 a day, you know, but... 
there's some days I can make a hundred. At the end of the week, I guess it averages up to a couple hundred dollars, two, two fifty a week. If we have a decent week now, the bark pulling, you can only do hit three months out of a year. Now that's real good money. You can make up for five hundred dollars a week, but it's just for that short period of time. That still don't help you the rest of the year. Yeah. And when it's twenty degrees out, and you have to get up at five thirty in the morning, it's still dark, and get on a cold four four wheeler ATV. You know that's what we got to work on. You can't get a vehicle where we go, and it's rough. You know. I can't afford no side by side, or I could get something that had a little heat in it, you know, then. So to heat your home, you use what? I use propane. I can get a voucher down here that helps me out with it in a, at LKLP. Have you traveled? Have you been around the country? Uh, yeah, I've been to Chicago, you know, Ohio, and there's Indiana, and there's places like that, you know. You ever consider leaving? Uh, yeah, probably would. If, if I had a vehicle and could get insurance on it, yeah, I'd go to where, the, where there was good jobs at. That way I know I'm making five or six a week. My brother, he made good money all his life. And re well, he had a heart attack and had to quit. He ain't much older than me, just five years older, but the coal mines, I make an old man out of a young man. You know, he gets old before his time. Yeah, I most definitely grow up hard. Yeah. Do you have children? No. No kids? No, no, no children. If you did, would See, you? Yeah, well, I got stepchildren. Yeah. I but got a little step grand boy I play with almost every day. You know, every day he comes out. And what do you think about his future if he uh, stays here? I, th I think he'll get a. You know, my nephews stuff there, they all got like two, maybe three college degrees. Well, one, my one nephew does. He's a mortician and a, was a registered nurse, now he's a nurse practitioner. But he stayed here? Oh, uh, yeah, but he might go to another county where, because the nurse right now, because that Obamacare, one reason, nursing job's good to have right now. They give him like a, one place offered him 10,000 bonus to sign, you know, and that's his 10,000. And uh, sign with him for, I guess, so many years, you know, sign a contract with him. That's been his best offer at $30 an hour starting out. I just don't got the education for it. I was in special ed, I never could have learned to read and write. Mm -hmm. So I had to get smart in other ways, street smart. Do you consider yourself a hillbilly? Oh yeah, I'm hillbilly to the bone. All my people that did live in Indiana, here's where they come from. You know, it was Leslie County. And you're proud of that? Yeah, I'm proud of it. Yeah, and it's, it's a... Because we, it's just like that Hank Williams Jr. song. You know, a country boy can survive, and these country boys will and can survive. And you're happy here? Oh, I love it. Won't be nowhere but the mountains. Do you have any regrets? No, uh huh, no. And you feel like you lived the life that you wanted to? Yeah, oh, I've loved my life. I love it because I met my wife that I was married to. For, she passed away a year and a half ago. Oh, I'm sorry. And uh, her name was Reba Jean Callett. And that was the best thing that happened to me. Or it helped get me off of drugs and stuff. Well, she did? Yep. She, if it was, you know, that's, that's the reason I quit was for her. Cause you know, I you say it's my fault that she was on them. Cause you know how you wife, if you're doing something most time in, in here in this country part, they want to do it too. Yeah. So and, you, you started it, you got her introduced yeah, and it to it? Yeah, caused her to get started. But that ain't what killed her, you know. Uh, what killed her, she drunk bad water or eat some type of bad meat and it give her a brain disease. They said only 600 people in the world got it. You know, around the world, most time it's not here. It's in a foreign country or something where they have to drink bad water. That's that, what, that's what, what killed her? UK hospital told us that anyway. And that's what killed her? Yeah, that's what killed her. I'm sorry.
she was just as good as we are right now. And five minutes later, we had laid down. She tapped me on the shoulder and said her right arm didn't move. And then from there, she just got worse every day. Five weeks, she was dead. Them spots had moved to her motor skills. And parts of her brain, I guess, it worked her motor skills. And she didn't have no control over her arms or legs. They tried to give her medicine. It, it, <clears throat> it helped some, kept her from, her arms from jerking and her legs from, would just kick like that, you know. And she was in bad shape. Hated to see her go like that. What's the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Don't do drugs. That's a message I can send to anybody that, if they watch this. Don't do drugs if you're just starting, quit now. Because it'll ruin your life. I could have had anything I wanted if I wouldn't have been a drug addict. Could have lived in a brick home right now and had a new vehicle sitting in the yard. Because I would have had a good job if I wouldn't have been a drug addict. And I wasted a lot of money. I'm a little crippled up now from a car. I got three bad wrecks. And that last wreck wasn't long ago. I wrecked a four-wheeler and broke my back, both sides of my ribs. And uh, when I'd pee, I'd, I'd pee that blood. And I was, that's been right before I went cold sober, you know, it was right. That's what another thing that made me go cold sober. I made three times that I got in a real bad accident. One of them killed a guy, you know, that was driving us. It killed him instantly. My, my first cousin, my dad's nephew, and I said no more. And I, I went to a detox in Hazard for four days, and then they put me in a Suboxone clinic, and it, and it works. If you do what they tell you, it works. You will get off drugs. And that's the message I got for young people. Don't do them. If you're fooling with them right now, stop while you can. You can stop when you're young, when you get older. It, it's real bad when you have to try to quit them. It takes uh, five times as long. All right, Audie. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story. Mm. And good luck with, uh, with your, your, you and your wife, with your life from here. Thank you. Hope you find a lot of roots in the, in the hills this week, this, this, this winter. Oh, oh, I'll find them. <laughs> Me and that old dude named Carbide, we worked together for the last 26 years. You have good friends here? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't got a whole lot because a whole lot of people's no good here. And some some people is. People that's around here today is good people. Yeah. But where it, it, where yeah, I'm at right now. The drugs that have kind of taken over the younger generation. Yeah, it's destroying younger and older people. It's ruining them too. Yeah. But the ones that's just starting, there's a good chance for them now. And the ones that's... For the young people, they got a chance to quit right now because they've not done them that long, if they are doing them. And if they ain't doing them, never touch them because you'll be like me and have nothing but a little tiny home to live in. And uh, for the older people, there's help for them too because I was one of the worstest drug addicts in Leslie County. You were? Yeah, and at one time, one of the biggest dealers. I let my mom and stepdad sell for me and they got busted. And they said it was the biggest in five counties. I was making a lot of money, hmm. but I'll never go back to that. I want my money the right way, you know, I want to earn it. All right. Audie, thank you so much for sharing your story. You're welcome. And good luck in the mountains this, this winter. Okay. Thank you, man.